says the suit names Sheffield Police Department officers Brent Davids, Darian Fountain, Billy Hall, Seneca Butcher, and former officer Max, Max Dotson as defendants. Dotson was fired after being convicted in the assault of another black man while off duty in 2022, the report says. In, res in regards to Dotson, he may have been a police officer, but he was no angel. You see how we can flip that around? Watch people go, oh, but he has served in jail. So therefore, uh, you know, why are we putting our hands up over this guy who apparently harmed himself? You know, they said the same thing about George Floyd. And yet we watched in 4K an officer kneeling on his neck for over eight minutes and 40 seconds. How many times have we in this country have seen someone who looks like us suddenly go missing, find out they're dead, and then the police go, well, maybe they harmed themselves, or maybe they did this horrible thing, or maybe it was an animal attack, blah, 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 blah. You know, as a black and disabled man, this story really resonated with me because I know what it's like to uh, I know what it's like to feel overlooked. I know what it's like to feel neglected, especially by society, to feel like you're a burden. And this is weighs heavy, especially when you're a man. Because there's so many societal and engendered expectations that's placed upon you. And then on top of that, you have law enforcement that already looks at you a certain way because of your skin color. But they also tend to do the same thing to you when you're disabled. So you have a couple of things that are going against you. There was a gentleman that was recently found dead, mysteriously. And I really wanna get into this story because I think that it's important that we highlight these so that these don't fall on deaf ears. So this is out of the root. just happened here. Okay. It says the sable Alabama black man was found hanging from a tree. His family believes police were involved. The blurb says the family of the Norris Richardson alleges Alabama police were behind his hanging. Yes. In the year of our Lord 2024, we are still talking about black men being lynched. Remember, I talked about black men being mysteriously murdered a few weeks ago, and yet this still keeps happening. But America is not a racist country. Let's get into it, shall we? So, this is him, all right? Denoris Richardson says about eight months after a black man filed a police brutality lawsuit against an Alabama police department, he was found hanging by rope. Is it a coincidence? His family doesn't think so. On Wednesday of October 9th, six days ago, attorney Roderick Van Daniel filed a motion demanding that the Sheffield Police Department hand over body camera and video related to an interaction between 38-year-old Denoris Richardson and several officers from earlier this year. It says the filing is part of a civil a February civil lawsuit alleging Richardson was subject to unconstitutional arrest and violence at the hand 
of local officers. Despite him being disabled, the suit claims Richardson was being harassed by the department from November to December of 2022. So let's move on. It says, according to the incidents, the suit claims that officers viciously beat Richardson, compromised his asthma by spraying mace in his face and denied him food while he was detained inside a jail cell. In one incident, the suit claimed one of the officers yelled, nobody can help you at Richardson while he was strapped to a chair where he had been restrained for three hours. After most interactions, the suit claims Richardson was falsely charged with assault. You know, when we talk about defunding the police, and not talking about how we just want to uh, get police uh, uh, away, we just want to get rid of them, and then people are committing atrocities left and right without any type of law enforcement whatsoever. We who say defund the police, we actually believe in real public safety. Part of that public safety means getting goons and thugs with badges and guns out of our faces so that we can actually live. We are more devoted to public safety than they are. Because they're the ones who are making us unsafe. And every single time they see somebody that looks like me, Apparently, we're somebody dangerous to society. So dangerous that they're willing to end our lives. For some reason, they think that our skin may be made of Teflon, where they can, you know, fire bullets at us, and it will just, you know, not even affect us. But then reality sets in when they see us bleeding on the ground and the life fades from our eyes. And then they realize, oh, snap, this was an actual human being. <laughs> then they, they get their little vacation, their paid vacation for a few days off so that they can Focus on their mental health while they, their buddies investigate them. Let's continue with this story. As Richardson's life, wife, Leanne, tells AL.com that the Sheffield police harassed him his whole life. By the time he filed the lawsuit, the cops had just arrested him again for on drug charges. Richardson's wife alleged that the offer that they offered to drop the charges if he dropped the suit. Richardson refused. Hang on. He was suing them. And they tried to get him to drop the charges. To drop the suit if they dropped the charges. This is mafia stuff. This is organized crime. That's what this is. They ain't no bones about it. If you're going to sit there and arrest somebody, especially under false pretenses, and then say, you know what? We can drop these charges if you drop your suit. Everybody always wonders what would happen if the mafia actually ran the country. Baby, it's already happening. This is the result. Let's continue. It says, however, his determination for justice may have just been a grisly overshadowing of what would come if of Richardson months, months later. He was found dead. Richardson's wife told AL.com, 
He was let out on probation following the arrest, but decided to turn himself in after learning he would have to serve his across the country, forcing him to move from his five children. So report, she told reporters after he left the house, she stopped hearing from him. On September 26, Richardson was reported missing. Two days later, Richardson was found dead. He was hanging by a rope on the porch of an abandoned home near the Mississippi line where his family said he had no business being, according to a court filing. Richardson's family still haven't received his death certificate. The filing said, however, the autopsy ordered by the Colbert County District Attorney's Office rule his death a suicide. Quote, we spoke to a family member that said that the last time they had spoken to Mr. Richardson, he had been depressed worried about his future as far as the charges he was looking at. He was just down and out. He was giving some of his property away. It appeared to be an apparent suicide. That was from Sheriff Eric Bellantine. Do you believe that? Do you believe that this was self-harm? Take the poll. Take the poll. Because a black man hanging himself like that. Do I look like Boo Boo the Fool to you? I'm going to tell you right now. These police officers that keep going well, they hang themselves on a tree or they hang themselves at a shack. That's how they, they did self-harm. A black man? In America? Mm -mm. No. Uh-uh. I, I don't, I personally do not believe that. I call BS. Suicide or foul play? Richardson's family doesn't think he died by suicide. Now, the effort to get justice for police brutality has taken a new shape as they investigate if the cops had anything to do with his death. This is from his, his mother. My son was joyful. He didn't have any mental issues. He would never kill himself. He would not hurt himself. That was Benita. Richardson's mother, she said, he really was in fear for his life. I think it was a homicide. The family is currently waiting for the results of a private autopsy to return, which could take months per the report. Meanwhile, the motion filed Wednesday requests body camera video and jail surveillance footage from incidents prior to Richardson's death. The filing alleges that the footage was previously denied to Richardson. says the suit names Sheffield Police Department officers Brent Davids, Darian Fountain, Billy Hall, Seneca Butcher, and former officer Max, Max Dotson as defendants. Dotson was fired after being convicted in the assault of another black man while off duty in 2022, the report says. In, res in regards to Dotson, He may have been a police officer, but he was no angel. You see how we can flip that around? Watch people go, oh, but he has served in jail. So therefore, uh, you know, why are we putting our hands up over this guy who apparently harmed himself? You know, they said the same thing about George Floyd. And yet we watched in 4K an officer kneeling on his neck for over eight minutes and 40 seconds. How many times have we in this country have seen someone who looks like us suddenly go missing, find out they're dead, and then the police go, 
well, maybe they harmed themselves, or maybe they did this horrible thing, or maybe it was an animal attack, blah, 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 blah. When in reality, we see what happened. And by the way, we saw what happened with Sonia Massey. If it wasn't for those body cam footages, would we have believed the officer? I don't trust them. You've seen what they did in front of the cameras. Can you see, can you imagine what they do when there's no camera footage? If they are supposed to be representing the state, if they are agents of the state, then the more scrutiny has to be on them because they're supposed to be the ones that enforce the law. So therefore, they should be under heavier scrutiny than us. And yet, because of the way we look, we're suddenly under heavier scrutiny? No, no, we gotta flip that around. We gotta turn that around. This is why I've had people from the Ohio Coalition to end qualified immunity on this channel. Because why in the world do they have more immunity than American citizens? It does not make sense. They're the ones that are supposed to be providing the example, and yet they don't do it at all. Why? Because their original objective never changed. Slave catching still exists. Let me calm down. Because this type of atrocities should not be happening. Not at this juncture of history. This man should still be alive. This man should not have, we should not be having to say his name. I should not know the Norris Richardson. I should not know that name. He should be just living a boring ass life in Alabama and just living happy without me knowing who he is. Now, like I said, he was also a disabled man. I am also a disabled man. And there's a lot that goes into how we are treated by law enforcement. I wanna get into this article here. So, this is from NAMI, Illinois. The National Alliance on Mental Illness says half of people killed by police have a disability. Half of people killed by police have a disability. Half. Let's get into it. All right. It says almost half of the people who die at the hands of police have some kind of disability, according to a new report, as officers are often drawn into emergencies where urgent care may be more appropriate than lethal force. Hmm. Says the report published by the Ruderman Family Foundation, a disability organization, proposes that while police interactions with minorities draw increasing scrutiny, disability and health considerations are still neglected in media coverage and law enforcement policy. Quote, police have become the default responders to mental health calls. Says they propose that people with psychiatric abilities are presumed to be dangerous to themselves and others in police interactions. I also would like to present how police deal with people who are neurodivergent as well. 
people who may uh, be on the autism spectrum, right? And people who may be autistic, who are black, are underrepresented, especially black females, are underrepresented on the autism, autism spectrum. And so instead of calling police, why aren't we actually having mental health professionals and counselors coming to make house calls instead? But they don't want to do that because they want the money to go to police. Why would I... Why would I use a phone to hammer in a nail? Could it possibly get drive the nail in? It could, but is it built for it? It is not. What if I crack the screen? What if I damage the contents on the inside because I try to hammer in a nail with my phone? It's gonna crack the screen. It's going to damage the contents. So therefore it is not equipped to do so, even though it might drive in the nail. You need a hammer to drive in the nail. Therefore you need the appropriate tool for the appropriate issue. If it is a mental health issue, then you need the appropriate type of responders to respond to the situation. This is not a crime issue. It is a mental health issue. So therefore, why are we using law enforcement to enforce a mental health issue? It doesn't make sense. It's not congruent. And yet, this is what happens. This is what happens day in and day out and is exacerbated by race and class. Let's continue with this article. It says the report wades directly into the racial debates over policing, noting that while coverage of police brutality cases has understandably focused on race, that lens can also obscure how disability also factors into police interactions. Take one of the most discussed recent police brutality cases, the Chicago police shooting of Laquan McDonald, a black teenager killed while acting erratically and holding a knife. Prosecutors took the unusual step of charging an officer with first degree murder, knowing McDonald did not pose a lethal threat to officers who had surrounded him. When the video of the shooting was released, it sparked the resignation of Chicago's police chief in a national debate over race and policing. There was far less focus, however, on McDonald's death. According to a later investigation by the Chicago Tribune, McDonald suffered from PTSD and complex mental health problems. Let me tell you guys something. Living in the hood can give you PTSD. Why? Because people are committing crimes of opportunity and crimes of desperation. Why? Because the economics make it that way. So, of course, we have PTSD. Of course, we have trauma. And of course, it may cause us to act out in ways that are unconventional. And it is due to the economic situation that we are subject to. And it is not our fault that the economic situation and the system that we're in causes us to have to commit crimes of opportunity and desperation. Because people will say, oh, well, they didn't have to do this. They could have just did, they could have just lived life and go on the straight and narrow. When in reality, going on the straight and narrow ain't helping us neither. How many of y'all who are going on the straight and narrow are able to afford your rent? 
How many of us who are going on the straight and narrow are able to afford food? How many of us are that are going on the straight and narrow are able to afford our transportation? You're struggling, aren't you? Makes you want to do a couple of unethical things, doesn't it? Imagine living in the hood where you can, if you just sell a couple of bricks, you can actually pay that rent. You can help pay your mama's rent. Because there's crimes of desperation and lack of opportunity. Then on top of that, these schools, they're underfunded because of the issue of property tax. Because guess what? Property tax is what pays for the school's funding. Therefore, the schools in poor neighborhoods are underfunded, meaning the education goes down, meaning that the kids do not get an adequate education. And if the kids are getting an adequate, edu adequate education, then guess what? Can they actually live on to do better economically? No, it does not happen that way. And I will quote this. It's like the old quote says. If a flower does not, if a flower fails to bloom, you fix the environment in which the flower grows, not the flower. Meaning you need to fix the environment first. The environment that we are in is an economic system that is not conducive for us to actually thrive. This means that capitalism needs to go. Because it thrives on people being poor and impoverished in order for them to allow themselves to be exploited by the very rich and well-connected. That's how it works. And then those of us that are poor and impoverished, guess what they do? They point at you and look at other workers and go, see this person who is out in the street? See this person who's living in poverty? If you don't get exploited by me, or if you don't accept my exploitation of you, then you're going to end up just like them. And this is exactly what's happening. Because they want you to see the poor, the poor folks that are asking for change on the side of the road. Because then that means that you're, you're going to sit there and go, yes, boss to more exploitation. This is exactly what it means. And this is why you'll agree to not get that raise because you don't want to get fired or you'll stick with that job and just because you need that health care, but you're still getting abused by your bosses or you're not getting the type of money it takes in order to afford a one or two bedroom apartment. Or it forces you to have to go to that second harvest food bank to get that box of food because you can't afford to go to the grocery store. You can't even afford to go to a Save-A-Lot or an Aldi. That's what it is. This is the system and how it works. And a lot of people don't want to realize that. A lot of people don't want to talk about it because they think that, oh, well, you're, the reason why you're broke, the reason why you're poor, it's a moral failing. No, it's a systemic failing. It is not your fault that you are impoverished in this country. It is not your fault that you're poor in this country. It is a systemic problem. If a flower fails to grow, you fix the environment in which the flower grows, not the flower. Maybe it has a little too much acidity. Maybe you need to add a little bit of base. Maybe the flower is not being, the roots are not doing deep enough. Maybe you need to put it in a bigger pot. Maybe, just maybe, it needs more sunlight. Maybe you need to give it more water, but you need to fix the environment. Let's finish up. That reality may be relevant to the conduct the night of his death and the ways police may have de-escalated the interaction. According to law enforcement experts, it is, the, it is crucial that officers precisely evaluate the problems a suspect may be experiencing. Officers are action-oriented people. That's from Jim Cavanaugh. He says the training always has to be a slow evaluation, if possible, if other mechanisms to help people with disabilities or mental illness have failed, Kavanaugh suggested 
Often it's police who end up facing that breakdown in an emergency scenario. Every crisis in this society always gets dumped in front of the officer. I say, then stop dumping it in front of the officer. Let's reroute those funds away from police and start giving it to different aspects of our community that would actually help. Let's say hypothetically you are, you support police. Then why in the world are you so willing to give them, dump on them every single case that is not need of a police officer? Why are you making them the gophers of our society? If you support police, why are you putting that all on them? Why are you putting more on their plate plate than they can handle? If you, if you support police. If you truly care about police, then you should be for defunding them too. Because you'll actually be helping them. Because they shouldn't have as much on their plate. So, I just wanted to highlight this because a lot of a lot, a lot of us don't talk about the implications in regards to people who are disabled and they're dealing with police. And then it is exacerbated, like I said, with race and class as well. These are all factors that play a role, right? And we need to talk about this more often. And these are some of the symptoms of the system that must be addressed. And we have to take care of the underlying cause of these symptoms. The underlying cause, a lot of the times, is the economic situation. And a system where it thrives on exploitation, these are the symptoms that come up. These are the symptoms that are presented to you. These are the symptoms that are in your midst. Because people get PTSD because of the crimes in the area. The crimes in the area are caused by crimes of desperation and lack of opportunity. And the crimes of desperation and lack of opportunity are called because, because they have, because they're desperate, economically, and they don't have the opportunities. Well, how do we fix that? You have to take the profit seeking and the over exploitation out of the picture. So then by that time, by that point, you don't have another Denoris Richardson. You don't have another Laquan McDonald. You don't have another uh, Sonia Massey or George Floyd. Thank you so very much for watching my channel and I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfond. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. Forehead kisses and have a beautiful day.